Welcome back. Financial institutions are types of financial intermediaries. They simply collect money from savers or investors and invest it in the financial assets, which we have already defined. As we mentioned earlier, this is indirect investment, where people who deposit their savings in the bank don't have direct claim in the company in which the bank invests in. However, the saver has a claim on the bank, who by return has a claim on the borrower of the money through a loan. Banks are also called deposit-taking institutions or depository institutions because simply they take deposits. Banks vary in whom they serve and how they are organized. They have different names in different countries. Let's go through some different types of banks. A central bank is a financial institution given privileged control over the production and distribution of money and credit or a nation, or even for a group of nations. In modern economies, the central bank is usually responsible for the formulation of monetary policy and the regulation of member banks. Although some of, of, of the uh, uh, central banks are nationalized, many central banks are not government agencies and so are often described as being politically independent. However, even if a central bank is not legally owned by the government, its privileges are established and protected by law. What was the last decision taken by the central bank in your country? Try to Google it. The second type, building societies also called savings and loan associations in some countries, specialized in financing long-term residential mortgages. These types of banks are usually smaller than banks, but having different approaches and benefits to their consumers. As they are supporting home buyers, quicker to increase mortgage lending, helping more people to enter the housing market. In a study done in 2016, the volume of lending done for mortgage from building societies was about 37 billion euros, while from banks was 3 billion euros. It's also offering greater security for homeowners due to the low appetite of risk. We didn't yet discuss the risk management, but by definition, lower appetite of risk means that you are not willing to take a higher risk. So this is reflected in the lower rate of mortgage default from buyers, while this is a huge risk in normal banks. Going to the third type of banks, retail banks, also called consumer banks. Retail banks provide banking products and services to consumers as individuals, not businesses. These products and services include checking and savings accounts, debit and credit cards, mortgage, personal loans, and certificate of deposit. An increasing number of retail banking transactions are now performed either electronically via automated teller machine at the end, which we all know, or over the internet. The fourth type, commercial banks. Commercial banks provide a wide range of products and services to companies and other financial institutions. A commercial bank is a type of financial institutions that accepts deposits, offers checking account services, makes various loans, and offer basic financial products like certificates of deposit, and saving accounts to individuals and small businesses. A commercial bank is where most people do their banking as opposed to an investment bank. And we will discuss the investment bank later. But let us differentiate between the commercial bank and the retail bank in short. Both retail and commercial banks refer entirely to depository institutions, meaning that they accept deposits from clients and make loans. They simply serve different clients. Although most of the time, retail and commercial banking simply refers to two sides of the same business. 
A retail business, as we all know, is one which operates on relatively small volumes or one which offers goods and services for consumption rather than for use in another business. For example, a retail butcher would offer meat for someone to bring home and eat, while a wholesale or commercial butcher would offer meat for a restaurant to resell as part of their business model. Retail banking operates the same way, offering services for individuals to manage their personal finances. You can see here in the picture a lot of examples for commercial banks. You can also try to find the list of commercial banks in your country and read more about them. The fifth type and the last one that we will discuss, an investment bank is a financial intermediary that performs a variety of services. Most investment banks specialize in large and complex financial transactions, such as underwriting for companies that want to be listed in the exchange and to their IPO, the initial public offering, and we will discuss these terminologies later. It's acting as an intermediary between a security issuer, now we know what does security means, which we already uh, uh, know as an equity or shares, and the investing public, which are the investors who buy these shares. Also facilitating mergers and acquisitions, which we call M&A, and other corporate reorganizations. Also, the investment bank is acting as a broker or financial advisor for institutional clients. Unlike commercial banks, investment bank do not take deposits and this is also different between investment banks and retail banks we have differentiated between retail banks and commercial banks from the type of clients that they are serving and commercial banks and investment banks are different as well and offering different services and finally the investment bank does not take any deposit I also invite you to search for the investment banks in your country and know more about it, and know how they help companies in your country. Now, just to recap, we covered five types of banks, central bank, building society, retail banks, commercial banks, and investment banks. We also explained the services that each bank offers and to whom these services can be offered. As an exercise, try to search for each example in your country to know which banks are operating in your country and service which customers. This will help you to know about opportunities that are already available in your domestic market.